So we have to stop demonizing people and realize the biggest terror threat in this country is white men, most of them radicalized right up to the right. And we have to start doing something about them. There is no travel ban on them. There is no ban on, you know, they have the Muslim ban. There is no white guy ban. Police have arrested Frank James. This is the guy accused of unleashing hell on a crowded subway yesterday morning, shooting 10 and injuring 23 in a flurry of gunfire and smoke bombs. The biggest terroristic threat in America today is white men. Now, I shrug because doesn't everybody know that? Last April, Noah Green rammed his car into two officers at the nation's capital, killing one of the officers. He was a follower of that outspoken anti-Semite Louis Farrakhan. And in Louisville, Quintez Brown, who was once honored by Barack Obama and made appearances on MSNBC, I said that the biggest terror threat in this country comes from radicals on the far right, primarily white men. That angered some people. Corey Ali Muhammad, David Anderson, and Micah Xavier Johnson all had ties to black nationalism and all murdered many in their cities. I don't really think there are two parties in this country anymore. One is a semi-governing party called the Democrats, and the other is a dime store front for a terrorist organization called MAGA. For a terrorist organization called MAGA. Make America great again. I'm a mega boy, stomping in the mega hat. Try and take my gun, believe me, I'm a take it back. I know some blacks for Trump, you could call a mega black. Coach your vote, you're on the mega track. I'm going to pay him back, hey. You don't want the beef, we eat the cow type. We ain't no Antifa, we know how to fight. I'm a nitty gritty alpha, you a flower type. I'm about that action, you a fraction, you about the hype. Hey. MAGA! Dangerous people who do not believe in democracy anymore. This president has radicalized so many more people than ISIS ever did. The US president frequently uses divisive language. For his critics, Donald Trump's aggressive rhetoric has normalized bigotry. He downplayed the threat of white nationalism. Most presidents have chosen to try and bring people together. This president very early on made a clear choice, divide people for his own political benefit. One of your 2020 rivals, uh, Congressman Beto O'Rourke, told me this morning that he believes President Trump is a white supremacist um, or a white nationalist. Do you agree? I do. This time people were talking about the horrible anti-Semitic murder of Jews at worship in a synagogue and the climate of division for which the president bears responsibility. At the end of the day, especially because this was a white supremacist manifesto, uh, that I want to say with more moral clarity that Donald Trump is responsible for this. He's been emboldening white supremacists in his entire presidency and his campaign. How far is it from Trump saying this is an invasion to the shooter in El Paso declaring, quote, this attack is a response to Hispanic invasion of Texas? How far apart are those comments? I don't think it's that far at all. We also have to acknowledge that we have a president of the United States who uses the microphone and uses that microphone in a way that is about sowing hate and division in our country, in a way that is about not acknowledging domestic terrorism when it occurs. We need to be abundantly queer, clear that the white supremacists and other extremists are the most significant domestic terrorism threat facing the United States today. Ray told senators that since he became FBI director in 2017, white supremacist arrests have tripled. That problem tonight at the heart of this new confidential assessment of domestic extremism obtained by ABC, citing white supremacists as a lethal and persistent threat based on their calls for attacks and continued attempts to commit violence. The Democratic presidential hopefuls say Trump is complicit in the El Paso attack. The president's language, his rhetoric, has produced the kinds of hate crimes that we saw in El Paso yesterday, but we've been seeing across this country. There is a complicity in the president's hatred. This afternoon, my heart is heavy. The city's mayor insists that President Trump must bear responsibility. It's you who have created the hate and the division. President Trump, you bring no peace. You bring no respect to our democracy. It's both clear language and in code. This president has fanned the flames 
of white supremacy in this nation. We have a problem with this rising tide of supremacy, white supremacy in America. And we have a president who encourages and emboldens it. Donald Trump adds fuel to every fire because he refuses to even acknowledge that there is a racial justice problem in America because he won't stand up to any form of violence. He's got no problem with right-wing militia, white supremacists, and vigilantes with assault weapons. President Trump has repeatedly claimed that a Biden victory will fuel the unrest in cities across the country and says the former VP is working with the radical left. So let's look at the facts and look at the cold, hard facts. Right now, Chicago police investigating dozens of shootings across the city, several kids injured by the gunfire. Just this morning on the city's south side, at least six people shot. Two kids, a 12 and 13 year old, among those wounded by the gunfire in Washington Park. Around that same time, over on the city's west side, a six year old girl and her mom shot in West Pullman. That child struck in the hand while standing on the sidewalk near 119th and Michigan. The city of brotherly love now facing a nearly 12% increase in homicides from January 1st to late November. Homicide rates in Philadelphia continue to grow. This mural actually has the names of those killed or injured by gun violence over the years in the city. Most of those people are black. The rise of political extremism, white supremacy, domestic terrorism that we must confront and we will defeat. For the first time in 13 years, North Carolina's violent crime rate is higher than the national rate. Dwayne Bailey is on the run and investigators want to find him before he strikes again. The 31 year old is accused of a horrific crime, sexually abusing a female over several years and its victim was a child. In fact, Bailey is not only accused of raping the minor, but he allegedly used physical violence to rape her and said he would injure the victim's family members if the victim did not comply. Violent crime is on the rise in the U.S. A Council on Criminal Justice report shows homicides rose 5% in 2021. That's up 44% from just two years prior. Violent crime is way up and claiming victims here in Los Angeles at a rate we haven't seen in decades. This was the scene on West 29th Street in the Jefferson Park neighborhood where 19-year-old Rayshon Spite was murdered, one of the latest victims of the surge in killings and shootings that seems to have no end. This map shows the 143 murder scenes in L.A. since the first of the year. Homicides and shooting violence continues to be our most pressing uh, issue. Chief Michael Moore told the police commission this week that more than 600 people have been shot since the first of the year, a rate of gun attacks that have outpaced last year by nearly 60 percent. National numbers show it's been happening almost everywhere, from big cities to small cities. That while officers have been told to make fewer traffic stops, they're actually finding far more illegal legally carried guns during those stops, up 60% so far this year, up 70% compared with two years ago, and the records show more people are being arrested on illegal weapons charges. Detectives are also making more murder arrests. Those are up 40% in recent months. And the president is using fear and hate to try to distract you from the truth. And we won't ignore what our intelligence agents have determined to be the most lethal terrorist threat to the homeland today. White supremacy is terrorism. What a liar he is. Yeah, there are racists of all colors in this country, but white supremacy is not the main threat we face. And in fact, since Joe Biden took office, there has not been a single deadly attack by a white supremacist or a QAnon shaman. At the same time, since Joe Biden took office, a BLM supporter rammed his car into a barricade at the Capitol and murdered a police officer. Then another BLM supporter ran over dozens of people, including children, at a Christmas parade in Wisconsin, Waukesha, killing six people. Many more were maimed. Sowing race hatred, suspicion, anxiety is terrible for the country, and they're doing it every single day. The FBI failed to stop any of these people, and the media refuses to cover the story. To them, the only domestic terrorists wear red hats.
what are your fears about the implications of the president's rhetoric? And do you have a message for the Proud Boys today? Cease and desist. Cease and desist. The American people will decide who the next president of the United States will be, period. 